Local 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Hey, uh, Talk of the Town, Monday, 28th day of July. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome to Monday. Welcome to a new week. And uh, welcome to the last week of July. Welcome to a cooler week after today, anyway. Today won't be cooler. You'll be sweltering out there in the heat and the humidity today. And then uh, late this afternoon, a thunderstorm will probably come through. And uh, we're looking for a cold front to chill things down a bit. So uh, late afternoon, uh, early evening, expect some thunderstorms. We could have some severe thunderstorms. You know what it's like in the summertime when you have a cold front come through and things are really changing fast. A lot of times we get some uh, severe thunderstorms. So be, be on the outlook for that uh, starting maybe about 4 or 5 o'clock this afternoon. And um, forecasters are telling us that the, we may have some severe thunderstorms today. But in its way, cooler temperatures. Temperatures will be up to around 90 today. But say goodbye to 90. That's the last time you'll see 90 this week. Actually going to be, a, after this front comes through tonight, actually going to be one of the nicest weeks of the summer, it looks like. Sunshine in 83 tomorrow. Uh, Mid-80s on the Wednesday and Thursday. And uh, temperatures in the evening down into the 60s now. So that is highly unusual for the month of July. So there you go. Uh, Trent McGee is here. Good morning, McGee. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm well. Nice to see you. Everything mm -hmm. going well? Everything's going just fine. Last um, week of July. Anything exciting over the weekend? Mm, not so much. Actually, I had my mom in town the entire weekend. Oh, yeah? Well, my dad was out. I was thinking, you were talking about California earlier. Uh, my dad's been there since for about a week now. He gets back this week, so she's spent some time He wasn't at us. Venice Beach yesterday, was he? Uh, no. No, 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 no. You see what happened at Venice Beach? No. I've been to Venice Beach a couple of times. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful area. It's where all the freaks are, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's where the, uh, the left coast weirdos hang out. Trust me. He's trying to avoid those as best he can. But hit. yesterday there was a man killed on the beach with a lightning strike. They'd never get lightning over there in that part of California, ever. Mm. I think they get some up in the mountains and stuff. But um, yesterday a very rare thunderstorm popped up on the, um, on the beach at Venice Beach. And uh, several people were hurt. I think they said 14 people were taken to the hospital wow. in Los Angeles. Mm. You ever been to Venice Beach? I've never been to the West Coast. Really? Never been. My daughter actually used to live I'd like uh, to go. Manhattan Beach, which is just south of there. And, of course, my friend John Beard, who you know was the anchor man out there in Los Angeles. We've had him on the show. Uh, John actually lived in a uh, condo in Venice Beach for many years. I first He put this on Facebook yesterday when it happened yesterday. Happened right out in front of where he, uh, he used to live. But this thunderstorm came up. And a lightning strike. And, you know, I, I noticed last week in the local newspaper, my friend Katie Walsh from ECU, I did not know this, but apparently she's one of the uh, top lightning uh, experts in the country. Hmm. And, and let's, be, let's be honest with you. I mean, you know, you, you ever out on the golf course or out on the beach or something and a thunderstorm comes up and you stay out there longer than you should? Oh, yeah. You see it coming. You see some lightning in the distance, and you're like, well, it, I'll just, it might move I'll, around me. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and tee off. And you just stay out there, and then all of a sudden, crack, there's a crack of lightning right there, right where you are. And you're like, why did I wait so late? I mean, that's it, you, you, don't, you don't think you're in danger, bad danger, when you see a thunderstorm coming up, but you are. It's a very, very scary situation. And people wait too late to take cover. I know I did it I, on the I'm, golf course a few weeks ago. We were out there, and it was, you know, storms were coming up, and we were looking up and going, well, it's probably going to – we were hearing the thunder, and we were, it, it looks like it's going to move around us. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's going to miss us. You, I, you ever heard I'm that? I'm guilty of that, too. Really? And then, you know, I tee off, and I mean, seriously, a crack of lightning goes right down the middle of the fairway, right where we are. 
I left my ball right in the middle. Of the, I said, I'm getting out of here, man. I mean, I got in the cart and start scooting back to the clubhouse as quick as I could. But that's how dumb we are. Mm-hmm. People do that. But it, isn't it weird? We talked about the story about the, uh, the man in Florida yesterday that was killed on the beach. He was killed on the East Coast at Venice Beach. <laughs> isn't that, isn't that kind of is, – is that a little weird to you? So you had this man walking down the beach – with his nine-year-old daughter in an airplane making an emergency landing, takes him out on the beach. The the young, the nine-year-old girl's uh, still in the hospital in critical condition, and the man is dead. That was happening in Venice Beach, Florida, about the time that this thunderstorm took place in Venice yes. Beach, California, where a man was killed on the beach. Is that is there a message in that for us somewhere? Is, what do you guys think about that? It's kind of crazy. Two guys killed on the beach at Venice Beach, one in Venice Beach, California, the other in Venice Beach, Florida, yesterday afternoon, killed on the beach. I just think it goes back to what you said earlier, that you don't know when your time's coming. You just don't know. I guess it's just a weird coincidence, huh? I think it has to be. Uh, Let's see. What else have I got here? Um, The state budget. Our sources in Raleigh are telling us there is a deal, and and uh, they're tying it up with uh, ribbons and bows today and tomorrow. Hmm. We could as soon as tomorrow. We said uh, Thursday that we could hear something by the weekend. Um, yep. My understanding and is that the um, the the House and the Senate have agreed on all points. In principle, and now the paperwork's getting done. So all of these issues that we uh, that we don't, and, and everybody is still being pretty hush hush over there about these big bones of contention in the state budget. The big one, of course, is teacher pay. Teacher pay. Now remember, the governor and the house started wanting to give school teachers a five percent raise. The Senate was holding the line and saying 11% raise for school teachers, and they were going to pay for it by cutting teaching assistance. We're going to know the answer to that probably uh, by tomorrow or Wednesday at the very latest as they unveil exactly what the compromise was. But keep in mind, the governor has said he will veto any budget that has a teacher pay increase in it over 6%. You know what I heard yesterday? And again, this is not confirmed. But there's some people in Raleigh saying that the teacher pay is going to end up being 7%. That they finally settled on 7%. So there was a compromise. That we- well, all of it's going to be com- – everything's going to be a compromise. I mean, it didn't look like the Senate was going to compromise on anything for a long time, but they we're now at the point where it's almost August, and this is the short session, they want to go home. And Lord knows we want them to go home. But if, there, if, 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 if there's a 7% school teacher pay increase, it begs two questions for me. Because I was told yesterday, and again, you know, this is coming from sources inside Raleigh, and this has not been confirmed, and I need to say right up front, this has not been confirmed by anybody in the legislature, including Representative Brian Brown, who sometimes is a... Uh, a great source of information for us, but Brian has been so tight-lipped, he won't talk to me about anything. (laughs) I mean, the legislature has been told, don't talk to the media. That's why you don't see anything on WREL or in the News Observer about them. I mean, they're, 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 you know, they started off this negotiation trying to do it in public, and it backfired in their face. Mm -hmm. And so I think the uh, leaders of the legislature said, look, you know, we tried to do this in public. It blew up. We can't do it. People are posturing. There's too much going on. We got to we got to do it bass night style. We got to get behind closed doors, shut the doors, keep the media out, keep all the other members of the legislature out, and just have the conference committee and the leaders of the Senate and the House put together a, a compromise and, and negotiate a deal. And that's what they've done. Again, the paperwork is not done because, and that's why they haven't announced anything yet. But 
I've been told by two or three folks, and there was an email chain going back and forth yesterday with a lot of folks, and it's pretty obvious at this point that this that the budget's done. The Senate and the House have negotiated a budget, and the two questions are this. If indeed what I'm hearing is that there's going to be a 7% teacher pay increase, which, I again, is what I'm hearing. It has not been confirmed. The two questions that I have for it are, number one, how are they paying for it? Because I was also told they're not going to eliminate any teaching assistance. Apparently, the House won that battle. No teaching assistance will be dismissed is what I'm told. But somehow they found the money to do 7% increase for school teachers, which is going to be, you know, every percent that they go up, I don't know how many more millions of dollars. So where's that money coming from? Are they going to be cutting something that they hadn't told us they were going to cut? And then the second question, which is the bigger question, is does this back the governor into a corner after saying, including right here on our show last week, right? He said, I'll veto any budget that's got a teacher pay increase of more than 6%. But now, I believe what he was saying was, and I'm not trying to help him save face, but I believe what he was saying was, I would ve I'll veto the budget if they take away the teaching assistance. So you got to think that Art Pope or somebody in the, uh, in the governor's office has been involved, at least, in these discussions. And hopefully there won't be another showdown now. Between, now that we've had this showdown between the House and the Senate, hopefully we're not going to have another showdown between the governor and the legislature. Right. We don't know. And I'm telling you, they won't talk. The other question is what happens with uh, things that people are very concerned about that uh, are going to be part of the budget, including the, um, the bill to require insurance companies to pay for autistic children for families. I contacted Kyle Robinson from ECU, the uh, director of basketball operations on Jeff Lebo's staff yesterday, and I said, hey, Kyle, I hear they've got a budget deal. What do you know about what happened to the autism bill? He doesn't know. He's like everybody else. No one doesn't knows. Yep. It's all going to be announced at once. And you know, look, you can't keep a secret in Raleigh. So you got to hand it to them. <laughs> you got to hand it to them. They've kept a seat. They've kept this thing secret for the last uh, seven, eight days, and they're going to unveil it all at once. What happens to the film incentive package for the uh, Wilmington area? People down in Wilmington very worried about that. The uh, ECU Med School funding, the Wilmington Film Incentives, the Autism Package, coal ash regulations for the western part of the state after that coal ash spill by Duke Power contaminated the whole Dan River down there. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I know what that's like. I don't know if you remember years ago, you grew up in northeastern North Carolina. There was a, uh, there was a fertilizer plant up in uh, Hertford County in uh, in a little community, uh, people up there will know what I'm talking about. They'll remember this called Tunis. Mm -hmm. You know where Tunis is? I do. There was a I don't know. I don't even know if it's still there, but it was a fertilizer plant, and uh, there was a fertilizer spill into the Chowan River when I was in high school. And now I grew up on that river. You know, uh, my my sister and I were we were up there yesterday. My sister and I were talking about how much fun we used to have water skiing on the river, and you know, there was an area up there called Arrowhead Beach where essentially I grew up. And, you know, it was a big deal when the, that, that fertilizer plant dumped fertilizer into, I mean, think about dumping fertilizer into a, one of our rivers. What ended up happening was stuff started to grow that we didn't want to grow, and, it, and all that algae and stuff. It was a huge algae bloom, and uh, I remember Jim Hunt was the uh, governor at the time, and he came down there a couple of times and pledged to clean it up and all, and it just took forever. So I understand what the people in the Dan River are, are talking about. When that coal ash got spilled into the uh, river to, over there, has to be very disappointing yeah. for people who live along that river and use that river. And, uh, you know, what are the new regulations going to be for, for that, for Duke Power? Speaking of Duke Power... You heard anything? No. I heard that there could be an announcement coming this week, maybe, with Duke Power that might be good news for Eastern North Carolina. We're hoping so.
but we haven't heard anything. I know there's a big, uh, I think there's a board meeting today, is that right? They've been working forever on that deal, trying to get uh, electricities to sell those uh, power plants. Are you texting someone to ask them if we can say it? <laughs> no, no, no. I was... Later this Carly week, we'll, la later this week, we'll probably be able to uh, to do that. Is Carly ready? She's about ready to go. Yeah. So anyway, back to the uh, back back to the budget. I think we'll hear something as soon as today. I suspect that it will probably be tomorrow. And um, what's really going to be interesting after these uh, legislators have hissed at each other for the last sixty days is to see them come out and hold hands together and talk about the great compromise that they've got. <laughs> And how great it's going to be for the citizens of North Carolina. Which, you know, maybe it will be. I hope so. I hope so. But the uh, here's, here's the good news about it. I mean, you know, um, you've got a government now that's committed to uh, making sure school teachers get paid more and better and fairly in the future. Certainly a positive. And I, was, I saw that video of the, uh, of the folks from, uh, the, I guess, the Houston, Texas, School systems have been in North Carolina for the last two weeks recruiting teachers down there. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is paying teachers. Starting pay down there is about forty-five uh, dollars to $50,000. And there, were, I, I, there was a story on, it might have been on WITN over WITN the weekend, had one. Yeah. Uh, a story from one of the Charlotte TV stations where there were some Teachers, I, I, I saw this interview with this uh, young man who is a school teacher from Union County who said, hey, I'm not married. Um, I got a master's degree. I'm going to Houston. They offered me a job on the spot, and I'm going down there. So, you know, when that kind of thing starts to happen, you've got to do something. Should have been done years ago, but again, you know, the... Uh, you know, I, it, it's great to see the Republican leadership leading the way on that, after how many people declared themselves the education governors? Jim Hunt claimed he was the education governor. Remember Mike Easley? I'm the education governor. More at four. Yeah. Um, smart start. I'm doing all this stuff for education. Bev Perdue. I don't know. What, what, what did Bev Perdue do? Did she do anything in the four years she was governor? She did nothing. But all these Democrats have claimed for years to be the Democratic, uh, the, 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 the education governors, and nothing has happened under their control to, in, to further the, the ball down the field with regard to teacher pay. So it's good to see the Republicans taking the lead on that and fixing a problem that they were handed, in spite of the fact that William Barber and um, Rodney Ellis and the people from NCAE have criticized them like crazy for the last several years. All right, let's get a break in. We're coming back. Carly Swain with news headlines up next on the road this morning, live on uh, location somewhere, 22 after uh, 8 o'clock. More talk of the town for Monday, the 28th day of July. Coming back right after this. At the law firm of Hardy & Hardy, we don't simply take cases. We take your case personally. I've been in several car accidents, and each time I've turned to Hardy & Hardy for help. They are honest hardworking and dependable. I've been satisfied with the conclusion of each case and I would recommend Wayne and Charles Hardy to my family and friends. You matter to us. Protecting the rights of the seriously injured. The big one is on at Greenville Toyota and the deals are hot. hot, hot, hot. Get big one deals on new Corollas from $139 a month. Camry's $159 a month, and these aren't leases. You own it. Or drive with no interest for up to six years with no payments until fall. And we want to finance your future, not your past. Our goal is 100% credit approval. And you'll get it all with a Greenville Toyota Advantage. The big one deals are hot, hot, hot at Greenville Toyota, where if you give us 15 minutes, we can lower your payment. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. 
Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on B. Stokes Road. It's a well-secured facility with a live-in manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300. Where were you? It was about 4.30. I'd come home early for our anniversary. Then the call came. It was the doctor with my results. The last thing I remember is hearing those three words, you're cancer free. All across Eastern North Carolina, Vident Health Cancer Care Specialists and Navigators offer a team approach to detecting, treating, and beating the disease. Call Vident Health for Cancer Care. Keeping you ahead of the story. This is your Eastern Carolina News Update. Good morning. I'm Carly Swain with a look at your WITN News Update. Joining you this morning from Kinston as the Assistant Fire Chief here, Don Crawford, tells us that they are looking into two different fires within blocks and hours of each other. The first at 1133 just last night at 600 North Atkins Street. You know, one person was home at the time. No one was hurt, however. This fire is now under investigation. Then at 614 this morning... Fire officials were called back out to 1206 East Bright Street to an abandoned home there. We know it is a total loss, and at this point, fire officials say the cause is undetermined. Heartbreak in one community today as it, it, it is taking a heated tone of anger for some as they say goodbye to a 7-year-old boy who was hit by a bullet but sailed into his home and child sleep. Five days later, there's no one charged in his death. Clutching candles and photos, hundreds of people gathered in Wilson on Sunday night for a vigil in memory of Kamari Jones. He was asleep in his Wilson home when police say he was shot on Wednesday night. Officers think that a bullet came from outside, and neighbors told WITM they heard a gun battle in their backyard. Child's mother, Keisha Carter, said the support from her community is what's keeping her strong. That's a quick look at your WITN news update for this Monday morning time. Now it's 826. I'm Carly Swain. <laughs> Mix of clouds and sun for your Monday. A chance of thunderstorms later in the day with a few storms uh, possibly severe. Highs of 89 degrees for tonight. Some passing clouds. Lows around 67 for your Tuesday. Mainly sunny skies. A high of 83. For tomorrow night, clear to partly cloudy skies. Lows around 63. And for Wednesday, a few clouds. Highs in the mid-80s and lows in the mid-60s. All right, currently uh, 80 degrees. Going to a high of 89 today. But as you said, it's going to uh, chill down tonight. We got that uh, cold front coming through. Uh, news and the weather and a service this morning of Suddenlink. And uh, yeah, by the way, they've have you have you noticed they've uh, updated the Suddenlink on video on demand? No, it's, I've noticed it's that. different now, and it works a lot quicker and a lot faster and a lot better. Check it uh, out. My wife and I were on it over the weekend and watched it. You know what we finally watched? Lone Survivor. How was it? Intense. You know, I read the uh, I read the book, and you know, you you remember we had Marcus Luttrell, the author of uh, Lone Survivor, on the show. We had him on mm -hmm. the show twice. Yep. Tried to get him to come to Greenville. Worked on that. Never were able to get it done. He's in the movie, by the way. Oh, he, he, he doesn't play himself. Mark, uh, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg, Marky Mark plays him in the movie. But uh, Luttrell is in the movie throughout the movie. He plays one of the other Navy SEALs that was part of Operation Red okay. Wing. Um, and I recognized him right away when uh, we were watching the movie. But the acting is um, pretty phenomenal. You know, Mark Wahlberg did a good job with that movie. He's good. Yeah. Never thought he'd amount to much be much of an actor, but he's he's, good. he's turned out to be uh yeah. it's it's uh it's if if you read the book or you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. The uh the gunfight scene on, takes place on the side of a mountain in Afghanistan. Is is uh, you have to you have to be prepared for that. It's pretty rough to watch, but uh, 
if you read the book, you also know that it was hard to read, but it was it was pretty uh, riveting. You couldn't, you know, that part of the book you couldn't put it down. Uh, but uh, that's that's still available. Lone Survivor is still out there if you want to see it. A lot of other great movies out there. Also, Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit, Bad Words. Got some new ones uh, coming on tomorrow. And it's here's the thing I love about the new video on demand with Suddenlink. It now has a search engine. You can type in the movie you're looking for and find it. That's which, convenient. Which, you, which you, you didn't have that before. Right. That is convenient. And so that's, okay. that's a really cool new feature of the uh, new video on demand mm -hmm. with Suddenlink. I like that. Uh, and, of course, uh, they've got some great deals going on right now at Suddenlink. They still have the big switch event going on. For those of you still uh, kind of hung on the uh, satellite contracts, it's the best time ever to bundle and save with a Suddenlink's big switch event. When you switch up now, you get SL200 HDTV and 15 meg internet, and it's just $59 a month. You can add your home phone to that for just $10 a month, which I did a long time ago. Somebody asked me about that. They said, I hear you talking about Suddenlink's uh, telephone service. Is it normal service? You don't know any difference. Well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this, it's, it, we have it here, right, Michael? Aren't, aren't, isn't, don't, isn't every one of our phone lines here a Suddenlink line now? Everyone's a Suddenlink line. We're on all Suddenlink. Uh, in fact, we've got the fiber optics here in the, uh, in, the, in the radio station. Get Suddenlink's best product lineup by switching up today. Call Suddenlink at 866-432-1184, 866-432-1184, or visit Suddenlink.com or visit the local store to demo the amazing new Suddenlink technology for yourself. All right, let's take a break. We're coming back. Uh, we're going to learn about something going on. The new RHA Howell Center for... Uh, 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 disabled Patients has just opened, I believe, here in Greenville. We've got somebody to talk about that. And uh, McGee's got sports and more as we roll through Monday morning, July 28th here on Talk of the Town. Be right back. At the law firm of Hardy & Hardy, we don't simply take cases. We take your case personally. I've been in several car accidents, and each time I've turned to Hardy & Hardy for help. They are honest, hardworking, and dependable. I've been satisfied with the conclusion of each case, and I would recommend Wayne and Charles Hardy to my family and friends. You matter to us. Protecting the rights of the seriously injured. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has your new truck this summer. Save up to $10,000 on a new Ram 1500 or lease it for only $139 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on B. Stokes Road. It's a well-secured facility with a live-in manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300.
Summer savings have arrived at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Save up to $4,000 on a new Dodge Journey or lease the all new Jeep Cherokee for just $199 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Okay, welcome back. Talk of the Town Monday morning. It's the uh, 28th day of uh, July, last week of uh, July as we start into uh, the dog days here, but it's going to be cooler tomorrow. Got that cold front coming through, going to cool things off, going to have a really nice week. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But first, uh, something, uh, something new going on in Greenville, as always. We love having uh, folks stop by and tell us the very latest of about things happening uh, in eastern North Carolina. I just met this gentleman for the first time, and I'm going to get the name right on my first try. You ready? Jacques Pasaleg. You got it. Is that it? That's it. Jacques Pasaleg. I've been seeing your name on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Because you and our friends on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, there we go. But I, but I, I got to follow the big hen, right? <laughs> I was I, I've, I've local legend. Wondered, how do you pronounce that name? You came, it's, it's easier than it looks. It is. Pasaleg. Yep. Jacques Pasaleg. Yep. And we're and you're going to tell us about uh, something new at the RHA. Howell Center yes. uh, here in Greenville. What is the RHA Howell well, well, Center? Well, to kind of give you a little bit of history, Miss um, Howell started R, uh, Howell's Child Care uh, Centers back in 1970, so about 30-some years now, uh, going, I guess, 40-some years. Um, now, was this locally? This was, out of LaGrange, and uh, okay. now they have 30-some uh, facilities here in North Carolina. Um, they were recently purchased by RHA. Um, what is RHA? RHA Health Services is a larger, they do very similar things, but mm -hmm. a larger company. RHA Howell is still locally kind of operated uh, mm -hmm. independently. Um, but what they do, Henry, is they work with uh, autistic and developmentally disabled um, uh, patients and their clients. Uh, not just children. Not Well, mostly children, but right. they, they start, you know, they can age out uh, stay there pretty much their, their whole lives. But traditionally, they, they had been in, ended up in a state-run organization. Ms. Howell wanted to kind of change that, offer a private solution. And um, from the staff, uh, the people that run RHA Howell, it's a, uh, it's a great organization. And what they found is that they wanted to be able to give uh, these folks, uh, their clients, a chance to put their passions, some love art, some love cooking, things like that, uh, a, a chance to you know make a little money. And um, what they're going to do is they've opened up a retail store called Curry Creations, which is in the Wintergreen Commercial Park over there on uh, where Fire or Fire Tower and Evans, kind of Evans ends, Old Tar starts, All Britons is right there, yeah, the, the right, seafood yeah. place, right, yeah. right there. We're, they're having a kind of a, um, kind of a kind of a cross from well, it's a BB and T on the corner, yes, and then uh, yes. kind of across from the Warden Smith. Uh, it is uh, law exactly offices. right yeah. there. It's uh, Sweet yeah. H. This Wednesday, the thirtieth, from four thirty to six thirty, uh, they're having a ribbon cutting to kind of showcase what they do, and it's going to be a retail store. It's going to offer jewelry made by their clients. Mm -hmm. um, garden ceramics, locally commissioned artwork, beeswax candles. And uh, so they're going to have staff and clients in there working the retail store. And all of it's going back to fund, you know, uh, they, they are a private organization, but rely heavily on Medicaid dollars, which they have not got an increase in, in quite some time, um, unfortunately. And probably uh, won't in this budget. <laughs> no, and it seems like uh, they're the first to get cut a lot yeah. of times. So yeah. um, they're, they're opening up uh, this retail store. Uh, they really do God's work um, from the from the clients to the staff there. It's a really great, uh, great story. And uh, they wanted me to kind of help help get the message out there. We want everybody to show up. Um, what, I don't now live, what, what is it they're going to sell there at the uh, at the retail uh, location? Jewelry, handmade jewelry by the, the clients, the patients. So the, these um, are the patients uh, in the center that actually make these things. They and make they're going to be yeah. selling them uh, in the... Dog treats. And they're actually, uh, for people that know them, they're... Pretty well-renowned dog treats, um, garden ceramics, uh, some artwork, uh, candles, things like that. So, um, and it's well, called Curry Curry Creations. Curry create. Now, what's the why? Why Curry? Curry was actually uh, JJ Curry was one of their patients. I see. Uh, he passed away in 2011. He had a real um, passion for art and mm -hmm. uh, did a lot of artwork. And they wanted to open this up to kind of live on his name and and bring out more. Um, you know, they want 
the patients to be more active. Um, and uh, so they're, they're trying to get that message out there. All we right. want all our friends here in Greenville, Pitt County, Aiden, wherever you're coming from, come by Wednesday, this Wednesday, July 30th. 4.30 to 6.30, even if it's for five to seven minutes, um, stop by, see what they do, and, and just get the word out there. So it's a ribbon cutting and open house. It is. It is. 4.30 to 6.30 on Wednesday at uh, the new Curry Creations location, which, of course, is part of the RHA Howell uh, Center. Now, uh, th there's a lot going on with disabled in North Carolina right now. In fact, it's funny. I was just reading the... Uh, newspaper this morning apparently there was a big uh, lobby this weekend uh, the uh, the headline in this morning's newspapers disable learn how to lobby lawmakers mm -hmm. we've been hearing about the issue with the um, autism bill and the fact that you know uh, there are a lot of people trying to uh, lobby the legislature to uh, m make insurance companies cover autism, which they do in 37 other states, but not North Carolina, mm -hmm. which is interesting. So there's a lot going on, but you yeah. as a guy in the private sector getting involved in this, why, why are you involved in uh, something like this, Well, which involves uh, disabled folks here in Pitt County? We're actually a vendor for theirs, uh, yeah. CopyPro, and um, when you go into the facilities, you walk, do a walkthrough and you kind of see what happens there. Um, you, you really get a very humbling experience in life and realize mm -hmm. that uh, maybe a lot of your worries aren't that big. Um, mm -hmm. And so I've gotten really attached to uh, um, the folks that run RHA Howell, uh, Jim Pant, the CFO, and uh, Sam Hedrickson, she's the president. Um, they, they, anytime they've asked us to help out, we've been more than willing because um, it's really something in the past that's been forgotten mm -hmm. uh, traditionally. Um, but now, um, you know, a lot of it's being brought up in the news that, you know, these are folks that are living that we do need to, to, uh, to help out, and they right. do have a lot of needs. And so. this is where a lot of the Medicaid money goes, and it's where a lot of the Medicaid cuts have hurt, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. They haven't got to raise. Uh, the CFO often reminds me <laughs> since, I believe, January 2011. So. Yeah. Uh, it's um, we want everybody just to come out just to see what what's available. I'm challenging all my friends in, in Pitt County, even though I don't live here. Billy Parker and Todd Mitchum, come on down. I know you got a few <laughs> Call dollars. Call my name. Yeah, huh? hey, come on down. Bring some Parker's barbecue. And uh, well, you know, Billy Billy always uh, participates. In he's stuff a great like guy. Yeah, so yeah. we want everybody just to come out and see what they're doing. Um, and they have got a lot of initiatives. They got a lot of things else they want to do here in the community. They actually have one facility here in Pitt County, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of people don't know, and three group homes, right. um, which are throughout the the, uh, the neighborhoods right. here. So, All right, very good. Curry Creations, a new retail store for uh, the RHA Howell Center on uh, Fire Tower Road. And again, they're located at the corner of Fire Tower and Evans. Uh, in the, is it the Winter Green Park? It is. It's uh, 113 West Fire Tower Road, Suite H. It's kind of in the back. Um, yeah. If you see All Britons, it's kind of loops yeah. back around. Mm -hmm. um, so it's right behind that seafood place. Right. I forget yeah. what the name of the seafood place is. Um, uh, I, you know, I can't short remember. Door, short Door. Short Door. Short Door. Yeah. It's right, right yeah. behind there. Uh, just right. come on down Wednesday at 430. This Wednesday. Just mark it on your calendars right now so you don't forget. Okay. Very good. Good to see you, my man. Hey, we appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Jacques Passelag. Uh, this morning. Appreciate the uh, information on that. 842, 18 in front of 9. We'll be right back. That was good. Yeah. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has your new truck this summer. Save up to $10,000 on a new Ram 1500 or lease it for only $139 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Cherry. Explosively Cherry. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752 8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy. 
where we know dogs. At the law firm of Hardy & Hardy, we don't simply take cases. We take your case personally. I've been in several car accidents, and each time I've turned to Hardy & Hardy for help. They are honest, hardworking, and dependable. I've been satisfied with the conclusion of each case, and I would recommend Wayne and Charles Hardy to my family and friends. You matter to us. Protecting the rights of the seriously injured. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on B. Stokes Road. It's a well-secured facility with a living manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300. Summer savings have arrived at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Save up to $4,000 on a new Dodge Journey or at least the all new Jeep Cherokee for just $1.99 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. All right, it's uh, 14 in front of nine. Talk of the town here on uh, Monday morning. Just kind of looking through the birthday list today. If you're having a birthday, happy birthday to you. Monday, July 28th. I'm looking at the There's really not many uh, famous birthdays here, McGee. You know, the most well, famous they, person is um, someone who's no longer with us. Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis would have oh, been wow. 85 today. 85 years old. She would have been 85 years old today. Other than that, um, Sally Struthers. Formerly of All in the Family fame, 66 years old today. And uh, for those of you who grew up watching Saved by the Bell. I did. I was one of them. This will date you a bit. Elizabeth Berkeley. Yes. Who played, what was her name on Saved by the she Bell? She played Jesse. Let me guess, because I don't know. How old are you? Elizabeth think? Berkeley. Michael, did you watch Saved by the Bell growing up? That, no, absolutely was, not. You missed that. I'm era. going to say. You, you watched too it? old for that. How did you watch it? She watched Chelsea, it. the I intern, who's like, how old Kelly Kapowski, oh my gosh, my like, I loved her growing up. And you actually watched Saved by the Bell? You had I to mean, have been watching it on reruns. Even when I was in high school, like, it would come on before. It had I, to be reruns. Oh, oh, definitely oh, yeah. reruns. Yeah. And they were always There's no way, because you're like, what are you, like 20? I'm 23. 23? There's no way that Saved by the Bell was on when you were Oh, young. well, I mean, I'm a fan. So you saw it on reruns. Yeah. So your your uh, your generation watched it also. Oh yeah. How old do you hey, Elizabeth think Berkeley, Elizabeth Berkeley? I think yeah. is Saved by the Bell. Like I mean, was that around the same time? Saved by well, the Bell. Well, that's what I'm saying. Saved by the Bell. Yeah. Well, yeah. What do you think we were talking about? I think a lot of people my age like still watch really? those shows. Really? I'm surprised to hear that. I'm watching the Shame Show that we're on right now, Chelsea. Huh? You, you, you with the, Are you with this <laughs> here? <laughs> um, McGee, I'm, how old did you think Elizabeth Berkeley? I'm going to say she is 42. You saw this. No, I swear. I did not see it. I've not saw seen it. it. She is 42. Man. 42 years old. And I did not watch Striptease. That even makes me feel. I didn't watch Striptease. Yeah, she actually did a she movie called Striptease. Stripte yeah, and that was, with, uh, that was very controversial for her, remember? Well, I think she, I mean, don't a lot of uh, people who, you know, are, feel like they're going to get typecast, don't they do something outrageous like that? I guess she, it did. she played a stripper in the movie Striptease. Yeah. That was the uh, Burt Reynolds. Wasn't he the... Uh, well, see, I, said, I, I didn't see it. I think I he played the old senator. I didn't watch it. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't think I ever saw that movie either. Yeah. It didn't look like something I'd be interested mm -mm. in. I didn't think it would be for you. All either. right. Anyway, so <laughs> the, uh, the biggest movie over the weekend, actually at one moment this weekend, had a fleeting thought that uh, my wife and I might go to the movies because we stayed in town this weekend. But I looked at the uh, what was coming on, and I didn't see anything that moved me. I got to be really moved to go to the movies. 
I was I did go a couple weeks ago to see Jersey Boys, and I was I enjoyed that. But I look and and uh, you know, I wasn't you know I knew my wife was not going to be seen walking into a movie called with with the name Sex Tape. I knew that wasn't going to happen. Probably not. Probably not. Mm-hmm. And um, there was another movie called Lucy that I thought, well, maybe that's about the life of Lucille Ball, but as it turns out, it's not. But it was the number one movie over the weekend. Um, it's a sci-fi thriller, Lucy. Number one at the box office over the weekend, estimated $44 million. Uh, Lucy is the story about a woman who uh, takes some sort of a chemical that uh, makes her use 100% of her brain. You know what they say? We only use 5% of our brain. But wasn't there a movie like that already years ago with um, who's the heart? Who's the uh, Bradley Cooper? Oh, yeah, I saw they, that. Wasn't yeah. there a movie with, it was. where he took a drug that, saw that he used 100% of his brain? Yeah. I forgot what it was called. So th- this this must have been kind of a uh, uh, a theft of that plot. But it apparently did very well at the weekend box office. It did $44 million. Um, And they said it took $40 million to make this movie. Why does it take so much money to make a movie? $40 million? They spent forty million dollars to make the movie, and they they got they got it all back this weekend. But and so now it's going to be profit, I guess. Forty four million is what they made it over, over the weekend. The movie that tanked that everybody thought was going to be a big deal was um, Hercules, starring The Rock. It did tank, you said. Well, it took them a hundred. It, they they spent a hundred million dollars making Hercules. A hundred million dollars, and it made twenty nine million this weekend mm. in ticket sales. I would say that one's in trouble. Mm. That's not very good. Third place this weekend went to uh, the Planet of the Apes movie, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. It took in about sixteen and a half million, but it's done th- in three weeks. It's done a hundred and seventy two million. So the uh, Planet of the Apes movie, I guess, is doing okay. I don't know. All right, let's check. Um, let's check our sports update. At uh, nine minutes now, in front of nine o'clock. Here's McGee on sports. Start with golf. Former NC State golfer Tim Clark rallied to win the RBC Canadian Open on Sunday, birdieing five of the last eight holes for a one-shot victory over Jim Furyk. Clark closed with a five under sixty-five at a rainy Royal Montreal for a second PGA Tour victory. Furyk is now zero for seven with the 54-hole lead since winning the 2010 Tour Championship for the last of his 16 PGA Tour titles. On the senior tour, Bernhard Langer won his second senior British Open Championship on Sunday, finishing a record 13 strokes ahead of Colin Montgomery of Scotland. Uh, Langer's 13-stroke win is the largest margin of victory in a senior major, beating Hill Irwin's 12-stroke win in the senior PGA Championship in 1997. On the track, Jeff Gordon won a NASCAR record fifth Brickyard 400 on Sunday, eight days Days before his 43rd birthday and on the weekend, Indianapolis Motor Speedway celebrated the 20th anniversary of his first Brickyard victory. Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Matt Kenseth, and Joey Logano rounded out the top five there in Indianapolis. And Cooperstown welcomed six new inductees into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Frank Thomas, Tom Glavin, Greg Maddox, Joe Torrey, Tony La Russa, and Bobby Cox all inducted Sunday in Cooperstown in front of more than 50,000 fans, all very deserving of that honor. And him 33 days away now. Uh, from the opening uh, football game with the Eagles of NC Central and the DJ, Coach Jerry Mack. The DJ. The DJ. <laughs> I don't know. Just who, 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 by the way, is, is my age. He's my age. He looks like he's your age. He's, he's my age. How old are you? 32. Uh, he's 33. I'm sorry. So the head he's, coach he's, of North Carolina. He's 33 Carolina. years old. And he's available for <laughs> weddings and bar mitzvahs. Bar mitzvahs. <laughs> Uh, the deep. And coaching your football. Team. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, while we're talking about sports, I want to uh, give a shout out to um, the uh, 10th grade Impact basketball team that went to the Nationals in Myrtle Beach this weekend. For This is a local group of kids from Pitt County. Uh, uh, Lou Ella McDade has been keeping me updated, and she's uh, sent me some pictures on Facebook this morning. There were 33 teams in their division, and uh, this local team 
placed uh, as the runner-up in the gold bracket. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, my understanding that a lot of these kids that are playing on this impact basketball team are uh, are, are very low-income kids, and she was telling me that they were they had a hard time kind of making it through. Uh, you know, they got out of town before I was able to uh, do, uh, you know promote it any. But I think I saw them actually uh, raising money. Uh, not too long ago, they were kind of out there, you know, when people walk around with the buckets sometimes for, for big things, they had their sign right. out um, on 264, actually. Yeah. But um, uh, Lou Ellen tells me that these were great kids, and it was a great experience for everybody. It was one of those things. But, I mean, that's pretty good, a team from Pitt County, uh, runner-up national champions. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I'm not really familiar with the Impact Basketball program, are you? I, I'm not myself, no. But it was the tenth grade impact basketball program, apparently from Pitt County, and you know Greg uh, Greg McDade uh, uh, is the uh, assistant principal out at uh, South Central, and uh, a great guy. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Uh, I want to mention uh, that coming up tonight at six thirty, Greenville Vital Signs tonight. And, Michael, tonight, the debut, right? We've got the debut coming up tonight on a Greenville Vital Signs of our interview with Eastern Orthodontics and a Pediatric Dentistry. Uh, for those of you in, in Greenville that know uh, uh, Jasper and Lee Lewis, so ja Dr. Jasper Lewis is a um, truly, I, 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 I use this term uh, about Jasper and others in Pitt County, but, but I, you know, if, if I use the term icon, I really mean it. And I really, you know Jasper well. Mm -hmm. Jasper is an icon in North Carolina, uh, not just in Eastern North Carolina, and really was the uh, the driving force. He'll always defray this whenever I say this, but I know what <laughs> happened. I know how it happened, and I know when it happened. And uh, Jasper was the driving force behind East Carolina University getting a school of dentistry. And I mentioned that in the interview that you can see on GreenvilleVitalSigns.com. So uh, go to GreenvilleVitalSigns.com or watch the show tonight at 630. Michael, it will be there tonight, right? We of, will have the course. debut of the Jasper's yes. Uh, interview. Yes. What? Dr. Jasper Lewis and Dr. Lee Lewis tonight uh, debuting on um, uh, Greenville Vital Signs. Michael, we do not have the new Vitant. Uh, we, we shot two new videos for Vidant Health last week, but neither one of those are uh, approved yet, right? Correct. But we do have the other Vidant uh, videos on there. We interviewed Dr. Patton last week with, uh, that one's going to be on soon, uh, about the hospice program. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a, a beautiful hospice center. Vidant has a beautiful inpatient hospice center. You know, they center. do, and I spent a lot of time uh, over there Yeah. when, when my wife's aunt was, was there. Yeah, my neighbor really, was actually there. They do a really good job with that. Uh, and Dr. Patton is excellent, and uh, we interviewed Dr. Patton to talk about it. I mean, you don't realize, that's one of the great things about Greenville Vital Science. You know, you, 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 you get to learn about what's available in the community uh, health-wise that you might not have known before. That's right. That's right. And uh, Vidant, uh, Vidant Health has a beautiful inpatient hospice center, but Dr. Patton oversees all of the hospice programs for Vidant Health. And so we've got an interview coming up. That will not be on tonight's show, but probably maybe next week. Uh, and also we did an interview with uh, Greenville Internal, I'm sorry, Vidant Internal Medicine and uh, Vidant Family Medicine. A couple of new doctors in town. That uh, All of that's to come. But tonight on the show, uh, you'll see interviews with uh, the folks from Vidant Medical Center Behavioral Health. Also the uh, Vidant Health Cancer Care Navigators Program. The interview with Judy Kutlis, that'll be on again tonight. And then um, we mentioned the pediatric dentistry uh, with uh, Dr. Lewis. Uh, we also have uh, Dr. Williams and Dr. Pabst on the website. And uh, if for the gastroenterologist, if you're looking for a gastroenterologist, uh, Drs. Ray Fountain and Dr. Tom Sturgis from Atlantic Gastroenterology. So tune in tonight on the radio or on TV on Cable 7 for Greenville Vital Signs, or you can go see these videos 24-7 at greenvillevitalsigns.com. And you mentioned the dental school. I believe that the dental school will be graduating its first uh, class this year. This oh, that's right. This, I forgot about that. This is the that. first graduating class that will be kind of going out this year. So, yeah. Interesting stuff. Yeah. You know, a lot going on. And again, um, we're hoping to hear today 
what the impact of the uh, agreement between the House and the Senate is going to be on these funding issues for the ECU School of Medicine, and we have our fingers crossed. Uh, there's an editorial on our website, greenvilleheadlines.com, about the impact of the medical school uh, and the economy in eastern North Carolina and, and, and how it could be affected by this state budget that's going to be released uh, possibly as soon as today. So if you're not up to speed on that and don't really know, go to uh, greenvilleheadlines.com and read our editorial. Uh, I think I think it's um, I think it's it's worth reading. The uh, the editorial is entitled um, "State Budget Has Huge Impact on Our Community." So go read that and visit Greenville Headlines every day for the best in local news and opinion. Got some interesting things coming up on there later this week as well. All right, that is it for today. McGee, have yourself a great Monday. Do the same. Thanks, to everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow here on Talk of the Town.